Hello everyone. So this assembly today is about Racial Justice Sunday, which we celebrated yesterday in the Catholic Church. This assembly is uh, more for children in Key Stage 2, so years 3 to 6. Um, and if you're in a younger year group, there's another link that you can click on. OK, so as I said, yesterday was a Racial Justice Sunday. Um, and during this assembly, we're going to be thinking about that and what we can do to help. There are a few questions that you um, might need to think about or provide answers for. So try and do this with someone, hopefully a grown up, if not, maybe a brother or sister. So the first questions I'm going to ask, I think we need to get this sorted before we begin, is what is racism? What is justice? And what is racial justice? So at this point, you might want to pause the video and have a discussion. Or afterwards, you might want to put your ideas um, in the comment section on Class Dojo. So just pause the video now and consider those questions. OK, so when we talk about race, what we're thinking about is um, how we can differentiate people based on their physical characteristics and mainly what they look like. And one of the easiest ways to do that is by the colour of our skin. When we talk about racism, we're talking about the fact that people have treated differently and often badly because of the colour of their skin. And we agree that the colour of your skin is not something that you can you can change. It's not something that you're in control of. You're born that way. When we talk about justice, we talk about making sure that people are you know, treated fairly within maybe within the realms of the law and that how one group of people are treated are exactly the same as other people. And when we think about justice in particular, we're thinking about the fact that if you do something wrong, then there is a consequence for that. And that when we apply these consequences, they're the same to everybody. It doesn't matter what they look like, where they come from, how much money they have, that we're all treated the same.
So this year's uh, Racial Justice Sunday is more important than ever. Um, the effects of the coronavirus pandemic, the killing of George Floyd and the powerful message on fraternity and equality by Pope Francis in Fratelli Tutti speak of the need to actively oppose racism and pursue racial ju justice with renewed vigour. So every few years, the, um, Pope, Pope Francis writes something called an encyclical, and it's, it's basically a very long essay that gives us um, direction or gives, expresses his views and tells us what he thinks we should be doing about uncertain things. So a few years ago, he wrote one about climate change, and the current one is about, it's called Fratelli Tutti. Um, and um, like I said before, it talks about what we need to do to oppose racism. Um, and so we'll be looking at that in a lot more detail when we come back to school, but it's um, something important for you to be aware of. So, as I said, it was Racial Justice Sunday yesterday, um, and so the theme is a time to act. And so racial issues and inequalities were identified nationally and internationally in 2020, generating awareness. So people became more aware of what was ha happening. Emotion. It made a lot of people, and including myself, feel quite sad about some of the things that we saw happening across the world and in our own country. And outrage. You know, it does make some people feel really angry when they see this form of kind of, you know, racial injustice and inequalities. And so in light of this, this year, it's really significant. And so the point I think we need to think about is action is needed to further the cause of racial justice. But what can we do? So in recent years, um, Pope Francis has been really on the case and he's used four particular verbs to encourage positive and direct action in relation to migrants and refugees. We know as a group of people, they experience quite a lot of racism. And so Pope Francis says we should welcome, protect, promote and integrate. And I'm sure you probably know what the first two means. So promote is to make people aware and to integrate is to help people, you know, um, become part of our, our life here in Britain, to help them become part of society and to look at things that we can do to join people together rather than to pull them apart. Um, these same words are essential to advancing the cause of racial justice. You can't leave any one of them out. They can't be omitted. And it is necessary to have plans to promote and integrate as it is to welcome. So what do you think this means? How can we make people feel welcome, protected and included? And remember, we're not talking about maybe our friends who we feel making them feel welcome in the playground and joining our games. We're thinking about people who maybe have come to this country, maybe with little or no English. They've fled their country because um, they are seeking protection and safety. Or it just may be the fact that, you know, we have people who come from different countries who um, live within our community. And what can we do to ensure that we live together as a community? Because there is more that brings us together than there is that divides us. So what, what could we do to make people feel welcome, protected and included? You might want to pause the video and have a think about that. As we gather together, we pray for all of those who are sad because of people's bad actions. Help us to make good choices so that we act kindly and fairly to people of all races. Help us to show God's love to everyone. Amen. So now we're going to listen to um, the Gospel. So a reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus started his teaching, he used these words. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free 
to proclaim the Lord's year of favour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At the beginning of his public ministry, Jesus used these words to outline his mission in the synagogue in Nazareth. Um, we just listened to them um, there and this idea that his ministry was a one of compassionate involvement and he was really concerned with people who were disadvantaged. We sometimes say those people are marginalised and so, you know, they're on the edges of society um, and they don't really feel like they maybe belong and racial um, justice is a big part of that. Um, Jesus was aware of the obstacles, including those of the law, which limited joy and fulfilment. Um, and Jesus acted and he confronted them sometimes as well. And I think it gives us an example that we need to do those things. If we see obstacles, we need to think about what we can do to um, confront them. So I'm going to ask you some questions now and they're just a time for you to reflect. You don't necessarily need to say them out loud, but if you want to, you can post them in the comments section on Class Dojo. Um, what do you think this gospel reading means? And in which way can you live out this gospel and protect the dignity of others? How can you build a world of fairness and equality? And how can you stand up for what is right and change what is wrong? They're really difficult um, things to consider, but I think there is a lot that we can do. And I think when we come back to school, in particular, when we're able to be all together, we need to think about what causes do we want to support and how we can support them. So sometimes it might be, you know, raising money. But another really good one is, you know, spending our time, maybe writing letters or raising awareness of particular issues that face that people face these day, these these days. And that's something that I would really be keen for us to look at when we come back to school. So we're just going to take some time now and we're going to say some prayers. So just join your hands together, close your eyes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, in your ministry, you were approached by people of many different nations and cultures. You listened to their cry for help, treated them with love and compassion, and brought them healing and wholeness. In our own time, we may need, we, may we provide to all of those who suffer the help that they need and the care that they require. May we, may we respond to the invitation of the Holy Spirit to dream of a world made new where the poor are not forgotten, but are given the opportunity to live and flourish with good health and equal prospects. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. May we respond to the invitation of the Holy Spirit to dream of a world made new where the poor are not forgotten, but are given the opportunity to live and flourish with good health and equal prospects. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we often like to think about what we can do um, in terms of mission, so what we can do going forward. And the education service have asked us to come together to write our own prayer card for racial justice and or design a logo with an image to go with it. Um, they'd like us to share the prayer card with them. And if you can upload what you've done to Class Dojo by the 17th of February, I will share it with them. And there's a chance that it may be posted on their website in time for UN World Day of Social Justice. Don't forget to add your comments or reflections to Class Dojo after listening to this assembly. Thank you, everyone.